For me, abstract thought flows more easily through images, multidimensional images, turning inside out, observer and observed, projection and movement. Both nighttime and waking dreams come to me of what might be, of ways to connect the energy of pattern to place. There must be a force stronger than gravity to hold me and to bring me back again and again to this place, to these patterns, the spiral path, the rhizome, the Mobius strip, migrating starlings, a moving mind. From my window, I can see Mount Chiha, the highest point in Alabama. 100 miles down the road is another beautiful spot, Little River Canyon. I've constructed a visual translation of my intention, which is to attract attention to this often overlooked and misinterpreted region in the form of six isomorphic map tables. In my investigations, I have found the patterns of migrating starlings are similar to those of a peloton of bikers. A movement, a Mobius, a shimmering sound is in the space between. This movement is present in each of my isomorphic map tables. In the first table, it is clearly visible. In others, it is reduced to small lines of cable or a plane of glass. A question I often ask myself is what happens in the mind between map and territory. At first, I thought it was like an optical illusion. Then, that it was only a matter of distance. Now I see that continuous duration we call time alters everything. Between map and territory, there is a transition, a pattern of movement essential to perception. As an artist, my work seeks patterns found in deeply hidden connections. Astronomers now believe that the universe is made up predominantly of invisible energy and matter. Stuart Clark writes in The Guardian, They call them dark matter and dark energy, to reflect the fact that these mysterious substances do not interact with light and therefore cannot be directly seen. Dark matter provides the extra kick to keep the galaxy spinning faster than expected. And dark energy accelerates the expansion of the whole universe. The pattern of the Mobius begins as a three-dimensional pattern. In two dimensions, it is seen as a figure eight, a symbol of infinity. Isomorphic maps plays with mapping our multi-dimensional world and the scientific discoveries at the beginning of the 21st century in the way Picasso and Duchamp played with cubism and the fourth dimension at the beginning of the 20th century. I first encountered the term isomorphic in the early 80s in Douglas Hofstadter's Gudel, Escher, and Bach, an eternal golden braid. Now I find myself naturally looking for things that play a similar role in a totally different layer of reality. A line of water first makes a wet mark on a rock. Pulled by gravity, it follows the contour of the surface, then carves a line, a canyon that defines time. Little River Canyon is such a mark. It identifies the nature of time it is the only river that forms and flows almost its entire length on the top of a mountain. Once, when dropping stones into a clear pond, I saw perpendicular ripples. Each concentric ripple going out from the stone had a perpendicular circle going down. This made me think that everything in life must have a perpendicular ripple.
going back to the beginning of time, the beginning is tightly non-woven. Matter and energy are silent and dark. From within, the fine tip of a blue-white flame, an expanding exertion, intently making tiny holes, allowing movement. Intensively dark matter begins to stretch and unfold, becoming more and more, less and less. The way matter and energy forms itself is additive and subtractive at once. The way space-time forms itself breathes in and out. It is the pattern of the Mobius turning inside out. The dark energy of not knowing stretches me out into the universe. Knowing the force of gravity and dark matter keeps me where I am. Struggling to make multidimensional maps keeps my mind in motion. Map tables expand out, 100 miles, the highest point to the lowest point in Alabama, from Mount Cheehaw to Little River Canyon. 